of rather depressing law, if you like. It's just things kind of order gets decays and things get more and more random. That's a slightly misleading way of looking at it, but uh, it's 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 regarded as a very uh, natural thing that that's, this is what should happen. You try and you you know you make a building like this, and if you just leave it, gradually it will crumble away. Okay, it may well take uh, many centuries for that to happen. I hope so, but uh, but. Uh, at least I'm not hoping it will crumble away. I'm hoping it would take many centuries before that happened, you, even if there was no maintenance. So, uh, but the second law, relentlessly, it would chip away at things, and gradually, uh, uh, things do randomize, if you like. So I say it's a kind of depressing law, but it's not really that depressing, as we'll see in a minute. But uh, what does it tell us? See, normally one thinks about this in the future, and you see things get more and more random in the future. But what does it tell you about the past? If you go into the past, they get less and less random. So that means at the beginning of time, in other words, at the Big Bang, things were highly organized. And it's one of these sort of almost paradoxes about cosmology, because in fact, one of the greatest reasons for believing in the Big Bang at all is the presence of this microwave background, which is all around us. And that agrees with theory uh, and the theory says, let's suppose that the, that the matter which produced this radiation was in basically in thermal equilibrium. In other words, it was in a, a maximum entropy state. Now that's a paradox. If it started in a maximum entropy state, how can the entropy have been going up ever since? That's, that's an obvious paradox, if you like. You start at the top and you keep on going up. Well, there's a certain sense in which it didn't start at the top. What you really see is very uniform state out there. And there's a, a sort of puzzle about the second law, which is not really a puzzle, but it's just something you have to bear in mind. Because the second law, one talks about normally about a gas in a box. And if you think of a gas tucked up in one corner, gradually spreads out, starts up not uniform, and ends up uniform. But if you have gravitating bodies, suppose these are stars or something, and you start them uniformly spread, they might be galaxies, then they start to clump, and they gather together and ultimately produce black holes. So you have this opposite tendency. In both cases, the entropy is increasing this way, so that's the way you expect things to go in the future. But in one case, you things, get, things get more uniform, and in the other case, things get less uniform. So what actually happens is some kind of compromise or complicated mixture of these two things. But what we seem to find in the universe that we know is this and this. That is, it was very uniform, and with regard to the matter, okay, it was maximum entropy, but with regard to gravitation, it was very, very special. How special was it? You can actually work this out. It's so special that the odds against the special initial state coming about by chance are less than one part in 10 to the power, 10 to the power, 123. So, if you try to write this out, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, with this number of zeros, you'd try to put one zero on every particle in the observable universe, you'd be way short. You'd never do it that way. That's not enough room to put all the zeros in, so... That, I can do it by using two exponents, you see, but that's cheating, if you like. Uh, so, uh, it's just, I just want to give you some feeling for how special the initial state of the universe was. And for some reason, people... You know, they try and say, well, you don't want such and such a theory or so and so a theory because that requires fine tuning or something like that. Well, there's got to be fine tuning. This is fine tuning. This is incredible precision in the organization of the initial universe. 